Good morning, everybody. That was beautifully played by the band, and those words were, someone cares. God cares about each one of us, and he knows us so well. But what I loved about this morning as well is coming in and knowing that you care about each other, and to hear the conversations, the laughter, that you're happy to be here, to come to worship God, and to have fellowship with one another. And that's a beautiful thing. I'm going to commence with, uh, with reading to you this morning, Psalm 97. The Lord reigns, let the earth be glad. Let the oh, I had a funny moment there. Got my letters around, the numbers around the wrong way. Let's start again. Psalm 67. 97 is good too, if you want to go back and look at it. <laughs> Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us, that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples justly and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, O God. May all the peoples praise you. Then the land will yield its harvest and God, our God, will bless us. God will bless us. And all the ends of the earth will fear him. Amen. Please turn with me to our first song, which is Song 380. Lord of creation. And I have to say one thing I've been so impressed with in coming here to Scotland is God's creation. It is all around us here at Clyde Bank. 
the beautiful hills. It's just absolutely spectacular. And I don't want to get used to it that I don't notice it. But it is beautiful. And God reveals himself through his creation that he has made. So we're going to sing this song, verses 1, 2 and 3, straight through. It is us saying to God that I will give you my will, I will give you my mind, I will give you my praise. And it's a question for us this morning, are we prepared to give him everything? And the fourth verse says, Lord of all bounty, I give you my heart. I praise and adore you for all you impart, your love to inspire me, your counsel to guide, your presence to cheer me, whatever be tied. And I challenge you this morning to sing this song um, in an attitude of, yes, I'm going to give all of this to God in his service. Let's sing the fifth verse through. Thank you. to a time of adoration, of prayer, and we're going to turn to Chorus 369. And I know we sang this last week, but it's a beautiful chorus of telling the Lord just how much we love him. And we hope that he finds, finds joy in the words that we bring to him, in the words of this song that we bring to him. We do, we want it to be a sweet, sweet sound in his ear. We're going to sing through twice through this chorus.
through one more time and to close your eyes and think about the Lord this morning. Father, I just pray that you will accept our praises to you this morning. I pray the words that are spoken, the songs that are sung will be a sweet, sweet sound to your ear. And Lord, as we come together here this morning, we come sometimes for many different reasons. Reasons We come to worship you. We come to have fellowship with one another. We come to find friendship. But Lord, you know the needs of each of one of us here this morning. And Lord, I just pray that you will answer the prayers of our hearts. So Lord, as we continue in our worship this morning, we just pray that we will be blessed by you in the way that is needed this morning. And we pray this through the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, good morning. It's lovely to see each and every one of you. The hall is looking nice and full this morning, which is uh, always a good sign. There are one or two folk who have uh, managed to get themselves to the point of uh, physical health where they can be here again. Um, and it's lovely to see you. And if you're visiting, it's also uh, nice to see you. And a special welcome to our divisional leaders, Majors Ray and Pat. Good to see you all. We have had a, a lovely opening to our worship this morning, a, a, a lovely, peaceful, God-filled atmosphere, and my prayer, prayer for each and every one of us is that we really can relax and enter into uh, a special time of blessing this morning. Um, I will put most of what I'm going to say, that there, and uh, I don't expect you to remember it all, that there's not a test at the end of it, I can assure you. Um, I'll put it out in an email, but uh, it would be wrong not, not to, to read and communicate verbally as well. So a couple of prayer requests will come your way. One of the, one of the, the people is a, a lady called Joan, um, who used to come here many, many years ago, a friend of Robert, and um, a gentleman called Jerry, and they both need our, our prayers uh, for uh, various reasons. And I'll, as I say, I'll put that out uh, in an email later. Some dates for you, uh, next, uh, next week, 29th of May, is Ascension Sunday, and of course, in the Christian calendar, that will be followed by Pentecost on the 5th of June. I mentioned last week, and just to remind you, that on Friday, um, Friday the 10th and Saturday the 11th, there is a divisional sleepover at Erskine. Uh, that is um, available for 8 to 15-year-olds. And if you're interested or if you know somebody connected to the core who may be interested and isn't here this morning, then Philip has forms for that. Also previously mentioned that at Air Citadel, later on um, in the, the season, 26th of June at 5 o'clock, we have the Divisional Fellowship Gathering. That's an intercore fellowship uh, that is open to all of you to go and free of charge as well. You get something to eat. Summer school um, is the 6th to the 13th of August, and again, Philip has forms for that. If you are here this morning and would like a form for that, then see Philip. And again, if you know of somebody connected to the core who would perhaps enjoy that week and hadn't thought about it, then speak to Philip. Uh, later on in the year, uh, um, just after that, sorry, it's not later on in the year at all, it's, um, it's in July. Uh, if you have a look in the Salvation Army website, you will see details regarding a very special event that is entitled Together 22. It takes place in Birmingham. It's uh, across a long weekend of the 15th to the 17th of July, and it combines three events that would normally have taken place separately. These are symphony sounds, a congress, and then the commissioning. 
and that is across Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the 15th to the 17th of July. I had a quick look on the websites this week, and you can get tickets for each day or each event separately, and you can also get a, a, a package ticket as well, I believe. So that's you um, fully informed, and if you forget most of that, then I'll help you remember it because I'll put it out in an email later. Thank you. The band is now going to bring their message and it's called The Lord is Gracious and some of the words are the Lord is gracious, abounding in perfect love and slow to anger. He rules the earth in, in heaven above. He offers his compassion still to those who trust his name. The Lord is gracious, his mighty work proclaim. So enjoy this um, item from the band which is their worship to him. Good morning, everyone. Um, I hope you're well. Are we all happy to be here? Yes? Oh, good. I got a very, very positive reaction there. Good. Um, we are going to um, sing a couple of songs together just now, and then a couple of them are new, but the first one we're going to sing is called Boundless Love. 
Um, and it's a song that was produced um, in a publication called Salvation Worship, which is um, uh, in one of the publications from Canada and Bermuda um, territory um, of the Salvation Army. So um, it's a modern worship song. However, uh, the text of it is very appropriate for a Salvation Army, but it's very appropriate for a Christian um, belief as well. So we're going to sing this song through. It's very, very easy to pick up, and I have full confidence that you will be singing very enthusiastically by the end of the song. Um, so I'll sing the first verse and then we'll keep going round and you will join in um, again from like the second verse. Does that make sense? I'll, I'll keep you right, don't worry. Okay, let's go for it. invite you to stand up and let's sing that verse again and join in with me this time here we go how great is the love the father has lavished on us that we should be called the sons and the daughters of god his beloved creation How great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that Jesus should come and pay with his life at the cross. His redeemed creation, that is who we are, his spirit has come into our lives and filled our hearts. There's the chorus. together here we go how great is the love the father has lavished on us that cold hearts can melt with mercy for all who are lost his transformed creation that is who we are his spirit has come into our lives and filled our One 
final time. His boundless love. Good job, everyone. <laughs> Just before you sit down, we're going to sing another one. And it's another bright one, so I don't think you can sit, sing it standing in sing it sitting down however if you would like to sit down you are of course more than welcome <laughs> however we're going to sing he's my guide now we've sung he's my guide before here and we've sung it over lockdown as well i'm sure you were all dancing around your living rooms um and so we are going to sing it together just now as i say stand up sit down clap your hands don't clap your hands up to you but we're going to sing he's my guide that's all the options <laughs>
What wonderful words in that song about God. He knows us. He knows us so well. But he can guide us to be what he wants us to be. And I noticed there were a lot of foot tapping going on there and a lot of people who looked like they wanted to get up and have a bit of a dance. You're quite welcome to if you choose to. The Bible reading this morning is taken from John 14, 15 to 29. John 14, 15 to 29. And it says, If you love me, you will obey what I command, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counsellor to be with you forever, the spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be with you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will realise that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my father, and I too will love him and show myself to him. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But the Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you would be glad that I am going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so when it does happen, you will believe. The ensemble is now going to bring a beautiful song to us called Holy Spirit. This is another um, new song. Um, Whenever we were talking about the songs that we were gonna use this morning, um, we were told that the sermon would be looking at um, to know God is to know Jesus. And the more you know Jesus, then the more you'll be able to understand um, God and inviting the Holy Spirit to work in our our lives. And then when we were looking at songs to do with that theme, this song um, jumped out. As so, I'd really like to teach it to you. It's a beautiful song, and um, so I'm going to teach it to you line by line, and then we'll sing through the song straight through. So let's um, go from the beginning, and I'll sing a phrase at a time. So the first two lines go like this.
Good morning. We will follow that chorus for the next two or three weeks to guide us on the journey to Pentecost. The spirit empowerment. The spirit of God challenging us to move forward. We in the Salvation Army are a spirit-led movement. Now I want to take that even further and say we in the Salvation Army are a spirit-driven movement. At our very beginnings, we exploded into the whole world. Because salvationists, officers under the direction of William Booth, said, God, through your spirit, take me where you want me to go. This is our beginning. This is our birth as a movement. This work is not finished yet. We are two weeks away from celebrating Pentecost. With a sense of anticipation, we will rejoice and remember <clears throat> the delivery of Jesus' promise that someone far greater than he would empower the church to drive it into the future. The passage we are reflecting on today speaks of Jesus' promise that after he has left his disciples, the Holy Spirit will come. Jesus also reminds the disciples that, and, and us that loving him is at the heart of understanding him. Loving Jesus is at the heart of understanding him. Jesus will always be with us. We see Jesus in our passage today still very much in teaching rabbi mode with his disciples. Being a disciple is about listening. It's about observing. It's even about mimicking, literally walking in the footsteps of the master, learning how to grow as a disciple. Jesus is trying to teach his disciples about what is to come. Part of his teaching shows us that in many ways the disciples shared the same doubts that many of us struggle with also. Just like the disciples, we can struggle to see God in everything in the world around us. Now this morning Gail talked about the wonders of creation that we see in the hills around us. But do we struggle to see God sometimes just outside in the mall? Someone maybe who um, is yelling at someone else, someone who is maybe uh, being a bit rough and their language is not the best. Do we see God in that person? God does. But it's hard for us to see that sometimes. We know who God is because of our experiences and understanding of him. We read of God's activity through our study of the Bible and in fellowship with other believers. We can sense God's presence when we pray and focus on the things that draws us closer to him. In reality, though, we can still have doubts. For example, why does a gracious God still allow terrible things to happen? Fair question. I don't know the answer to that. But it's something that we could discuss one day to share. Why does evil seem to prosper even when people continue to love and serve God. Again, it's a fair question. But finding the answer to that question is not easy. Jesus tells his disciples that they know God because they already know him, Jesus. Even though the disciples have lived with <clears throat> and followed Jesus throughout his ministry, Jesus is still very aware of the difficulty that his disciples have 
in fully understanding who Jesus really is. Verses 19 to 21 says this, Long before the world will not see me anymore. Sorry, before long the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will realise that I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father and I too will love them and show myself to them. Is that a bit difficult to understand? It's okay to say yes. <laughs> it is difficult to understand. They are deep words that challenge us. And we need to unpack them, we need to talk about them, we need to pray about them. The disciples still look at Jesus from a human perspective. That he was a great teacher or rabbi. Some of the disciples have an understanding of Jesus the Messiah but not fully understanding that Jesus is the Son of God. They were close, but they weren't quite there yet. To love Jesus is to know Jesus. At this point in the Gospel of John, the disciples have spent two to two and a half years walking in Jesus' footsteps and learning from him. They have witnessed many miracles, including things that are way beyond their own comprehension. They've, Jesus is preparing them for his departure. Whilst the disciples understand the person of Jesus will no longer be with them, the essence of Jesus will still live with them and those who believe in him. Verses 23 and 24 says this, Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. We, as people of the New Testament, possibly understand this concept a little bit more than the disciples did because we can look back at what happened. We can look back at the crucifixion. We can look back at the resurrection. We can look back at the day of Pentecost and have a greater understanding of what Jesus was talking about at this time. We cannot see him, but we know who he is with us and supporting us and guiding us. That's talking about Jesus. In the same way that Jesus said to the disciples that knowing Jesus means that we will know God, we can make this same impact in the world around us. You see, knowing us allows us to know, sorry, knowing us, that's people knowing us, allows people to understand who Jesus is. Why? Because they will see Jesus in us and our actions. So what drives us to love Jesus? A little over five weeks ago, we reflected on the sacrificial death on the cross of Jesus. We then celebrated the glorious victory over death through the resurrection. This is what drives us to love and serve Jesus, because he did this for you and me. There is a glorious simplicity here for us to grasp. Jesus died and rose again for you and me. That's it. End of story. Jesus died again and rose from death for you and me. Knowing this and believing in this means that we can live eternally with Jesus. If you get nothing else from today, just those two sentences are enough, okay? There won't be a test afterwards, so don't panic. Jesus promises even more. This is not the end of the disciples' experience with Jesus. There is still more to come. In reality, where this passage is located in the scripture is before the events of the crucifixion. 
The disciples would have listened intently to Jesus' teaching, but the events of that first Easter would not have been in their minds yet. And if they had thought about it, it would have caused them great turmoil. Yes, Jesus continues to live in us and is seen by others in everything we do in his name. But the promised Holy Spirit is still yet to come to the disciples and they don't quite understand what is yet to come. Verse 26. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Jesus is very clear here. The disciples still have much to learn and that task will fall to the Holy Spirit to teach them. To know Jesus is to know God. To know the Holy Spirit is to know Jesus and, of course, to know God. The day of Pentecost is coming. In two weeks' time, we will look at Acts chapter 2 and that great day of excitement when the promised uh, Holy Spirit will descend on the disciples and propel them into a worldwide mission. We are a spirit-led movement. This is at the core of our Wesleyan tradition. Honestly, it can be a little frightening. We sit there and think, What if the Holy Spirit challenged me to do something significant? What would I do? How would I respond? Please understand that this is all part of God's great plan. If the Holy Spirit is challenging you to do something, it's because God knows that you can do it, even if you don't. We're going to share in that chorus again. We'll be using this chorus over the next few weeks just to guide us as we sing it and remind us of the work of the Spirit of God. Sometimes that small voice inside you that says, go and speak to that person. Go and serve in this area. Go and serve in that country. Go and serve in my name. Let's share this uh, song again together. Uh, The place of prayer is open if you want to come and respond and just seek God's guidance in prayer.
Let's pray. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for today. We thank you that we belong to a movement that is led by the Holy Spirit, Lord. You challenge us to speak to those who do not know you. You challenge us to live a life that sets us apart from the world that we live in. But Lord, in that same way, you challenge us to live in that world and continue to be an example of you, our Lord and Saviour, Christ Jesus. Continue, Father God, to challenge us, to empower us, to equip us, Father God, to serve you in every opportunity that you would reveal to us. And Lord, as we prepare our hearts and minds for the coming day of Pentecost, remind us again and again that your Spirit came to continue your work of teaching, loving and guiding in us in everything we do. Continue, Father God, to guide us to be a spirit-led, spirit-driven people, serving you in everything we do. We pray all this in and through your Son's name, Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Song number 391, 391. Stand up, stand up and bless the Lord, ye people of his choice. Stand up and bless the Lord your God with heart and soul and voice. Let's sing verses 1 and 2. I invite you to stand. This is a sending out, equipping, stepping out in faith song. So let's, if you can, you wish to, let's stand up and sing this song together. For the living flame from his own altar brought to touch our lips, our minds inspire, our winged to heaven, our thought. Verse 4 God is our strength and song, and his salvation ours. Then be his love in Christ proclaimed with all our ransomed powers. Let's sing verse 5 together, please. <laughs>
Lord God, continue to challenge us, continue to motivate us, continue to equip us. Continue, Lord God, to just journey with us through the day of through our daily lives in everything that we do. And until we meet again, Lord, continue to join us in fellowship with one another. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen.